So I'll take one of these bottles and so I'll fill it up. Well, actually, I'll, I'll put the dye in first. I'll just, I'll just use this sample. It's okay. I need a proper red one anyhow. Let me pop the cap off. Yeah, just so everybody knows, the RIT dye is, is a common fabric dye. It's designed for use on, yes. on fabrics. For yeah, tie dye. Any, any fabric what it's famous for, for dye dye. Work. And so, you know, here's your RIT dye. And so, I've got eh, three quarters of a bottle of the nature of alcohol. There we go. That's how much. Oh, okay. I'm glad you did that. I was going to end up using half my uh, Ritz stock. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. It's, it's, and there you go. And you, you know, you control the darkness of it based on the number of um, applications you put in it. Right. Put on it. Hey, drop by how much of the, of the dye did you put in there? I was writing and missed it. What about a teaspoon? Like a teaspoon. Um, yeah, yeah, it looks like about a oh, teaspoon. Oh, no, no, not, no. Maybe, maybe, maybe an eighth of a teaspoon. A few drops? Yeah, it was just a couple drops. You know, eighths of a tea, eighths of a teaspoon. Okay. Yep. And I think these things are either three ounces or four ounces. I can't remember now. Well, and here's the thing: if you if you shake it up and you think it's too watery or whatever, you could just add a little bit more dye. You know, right? Well, yes, absolutely. But what you want to do is you want to you want to put it on your test piece, and and see what that reaction is because based you know depending upon the wood, it'll 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 absorb it at a different rate. So change color too. Yep. And then when you cool. put you know like with you know all other dyes. When you, when you put your final finish on, it'll it'll change colors as well. It'll ma it'll make it darker. So straight away here on a piece of pine, first coat, not much, right? Hmm. But as you keep, but as you keep applying it, it'll it'll get darker. Yeah, I mean you can make that cherry red. Uh, as an example, uh, I've got a piece of scrap over here. And so that was a piece of mesquite. Oh. Hmm. Have you ever put CA over the top of it? Put what? Super glue. CA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was explaining earlier about that, about the bowl that I took off. Mm -hmm. Perfect. This one here is that I seal it with, I seal with CA when I do a dyeing project because it keeps, keeps, you know, from, from getting, getting dirty while you're still working with it. So your, your so, process is, your process, Dane, is, is, let me make sure I got this right, is you've colored the piece and then when you're done coloring it, then you've sealed it, and then you go back and turn the inside again. Yes, because okay. I want to have clean. I want to have a clean edge. Gotcha. Now, now, Matt, uh, you said seal it. I don't want novice turners to misunderstand. If you put sealer on that on that color straight on, it may smear. It will or move. It, it, it'll bleed. It, it could. Yeah. Um, so, so he's sealing so, it with. So here's the so here's the full process. So so I do my call. You know. So in this example, I did purple here at the bottom of the base. So you always want to do your dark color first. And I spend it at you know 100 100 100 130 RPMs, and that allows you know the 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 lines to come out. You know, kind of like what you do with the paint on platters. And then I do the lighter collar from the middle up. And then once it takes hold, then I'll go over the whole thing, you know, with the lighter collar. But I'll keep doing that until I get, you know, the, the color that I want. Then after it dries, I want to make sure the alcohol is dried. 
I will go over it with boiled linseed oil. And then once the, the, the boiled linseed oil dries or soaks in, I shouldn't say dry because it hasn't had a chance to cure yet. And then from there, <laughs> that's when I hit it with the CA and go over it and seal it. And so right now, I mean, this thing would shine like a diamond if I was to put it on the buffer. I mean, it's shiny already, but not like the other bowl because it's still got to go through the process. And, and, and so I do that because the, you're going to have, you're going to have a residual that's going to flip over your, your lip if you're wanting to have, you know, you know, if you're dying the inside, it really doesn't matter. You know, the same color and whatnot. But I like to do dyed on the outside, natural color on the inside. And so from there, you know, this allows me to uh, turn off the rim for any of the, the, the bleed through that there is. And then I just hope that, you know, there's, it's not too deep. Typically, you know, one eighth of an inch and it's good. And then I got a nice clean, clean rim. Is the blank rough turned and then dried or is that a wet blank? Oh no, it's a, Tucson. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a dry blank. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so so it was wet. I cut the tree down a couple of years ago, then I cored it, and then a year later, you know, I'm finally getting around because I kind of kind of forgot about them. And then I found them again. I'm like, oh, I need to do these. But you know, in in all in reality, based on you know the the drying period of one inch per year, which you know maybe back east, but you know not out here. Um, you know, so these were, you know, they were they were warped a little bit, oval, and you know, so it's just a matter of reshaping the outside and, and giddy up on the inside once I, I get around to it. Yeah, but the dye would be different too. If if it was wet, I think. Or, yeah, I would I mean, imagine so. It, 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 I, it, I it would, it would, uh, it would draw down. It would draw down even further into the wood if the wood was wet. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Dane. That was a great, a great demonstration, sir. We very much appreciate it.